evening troopers. I'm fat because the other day a space wizard said to me, that's no moon. Right, Monday Night Quickie, um, which is my little series I do on a Monday night that I try to keep it quite short, where I talk about a single item that I've got in this crazy room that at the moment is in a right mess. Uh, I know, like I said, I normally keep it pretty, pretty slick, but to, today, I, because I've been setting different retro consoles up and messing, and it's all got a bit of a mess. So anyway, Monday Night Quickie. And tonight's Monday Night Quickie is an item that I bought from the Disney Store. And I don't go in the Disney Store very often. It's not my kind of place. And I especially don't normally buy um, the Last Jedi uh, memorabilia or products or merchandise. Merchandise, that's the word I was looking for. I especially don't normally buy that because no comment on the film. I don't think that some of the production design for the new Star Wars films has been as strong as older stuff, apart from stuff for Rogue One. For instance, a lot of the um, production designers seem pretty obsessed with the um, the old B-Wing fighter. And everything seems to be related to the B-Wing. Um, you know, that the, the, the ally, the, the resistance shuttle thing. Um, it, I think it even says in the manual, specifically, it used to be a B-Wing cockpit that they just put a, like a crew cabin on the side and stuff. So it surprised my wife, who I was with, because she I'm very vocal on this subject, that when we went in the Disney store last year or so, I actually bought this. Um, which is the like the salt skimmer from The Last Jedi. And this one is piloted by the old Finn there. Can you see the old Finn? Um And you know what? It was quite I paid full price for it and I paid it, you know, but it was the last one in the shop. And I'll tell you why, because it's actually really good. Um, as a toy, I suppose it's fun enough. It's on a stand and I don't want to... It's on a stand and it comes off and you can be a... Meow, 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 and pretend to be, you know, a resistance fighter on uh, whatever that's called, crate. I actually quite like crate um, as a concept and stuff. Uh, however, it was just a bit of a lazy rehash of Hoth. If they made it a bit less Hothy and a more salty planet more interested I'd have been more interested anyway so I saw this and as soon as I saw it I was like I'm having that that's coming home with me and the reason is I think it's a really cool toy and that reminds me of the uh, action fleet that Micro Machines did which are still among some of the best I think they are the best Star Wars products ever created um, because the action fleet they did proper scale model like really accurate really nice toys but they also did concept drawing stuff. Um, and you know what? They weren't mega expensive. Um, they were really high quality and they were 100% checked by Lucasfilm. And that was in the days when they were as strict as they are now and everything they made had to be spot on. Um, I, I, I'm assuming, I think there's leeway now. I really do. But you know, in them days, remember when Seth MacFarlane did the, um, the first Star Wars thing? They said you can do it, but everything has to be right. Anyway, back to this. So this is the salt skimmer off crate. Yes, it references the B-Wing. Very much looks like a B-Wing without the cross. Um, but I I really dig it. Um, as a design, I really like it. And I think it was one of the standout designs from The Last Jedi. So you've got the you've got the sort of engine pod in the middle, which is obviously power in the repulsor lift which is the Star Wars thing and there's also some kind of repulsor that comes out the back with the steering vanes um, then you've got the two control surfaces that I don't think are because with repulsor lifts you don't need them um, normally in Star Wars when something's stretched out like that it's normally a radiator um, it's every I've got loads of technical manual things for Star Wars and they seem to always talk about how their technology creates a lot of heat um, the Y-Wing, um, its shrouding was stripped off because its cooling system was buried within those two big engines and you couldn't get it. The, the, the cooling system was essential. You kept having to bypass and jerry-rig and repair the cooling system, so they just left the sheath off. And that's why the nose of the Y-Wing looks wicked and the, the, the fronts of the engines where the radar is. But the rest of the Y-Wing is stripped back and bare pipes and gubbins 
because of the cooling system. There was a problem with the T-47 snow speeders on Hoth uh, because they couldn't... Um, they tried to insulate the radiator at the back and they over-insulated it so it wouldn't run because it, was, it wasn't getting up to temperature so they had to strip the insulation out. So a lot of Star Wars technology is always talking about heat dissipation. So I'm assuming that there'll be radiators under here because this thing in the middle will create a lot of heat. So what you've got is you've got your, your pilot module on the side there. There seems to be a lot to the pilot module. Uh, and I don't know why, because it won't need life support, obviously, because it is a very low, you know, it's, a, it's, an, it's an atmospheric ground attack craft. Um, but who knows with Star Wars technology. There's a really nice cockpit that's very detailed. And you've got a fin there that's very detailed. And he... He pops out, but he does remind me very much of the Micro Machines crew that they did. Um, and then there's the weapons pod opposite, which has got those really, really nice, like, and each, like, there's two barrels, there's two cooling vents or power cables, whatever. There's two tubes on the wing. I don't know if they're like pitot tubes or they're blasters. And then there's more blasters and stuff on the side. Um, and then there's this stuff underneath. Uh, and, it's, and it's also, it comes on this little base. And... It's little skid is retractable, um, which it uses. I think it uses to adjust its centre of gravity as it's as it's repulsoring because this is a this uses like hover lift like like Luke's land speeder. Um, so I I really like it and I I like the design and I like it's very Star Wars compared to some of the stuff. It's very Star Wars probably because it's essentially a B wing but without the X point. So. Um, but no, I really like it, and I, I was pleased to buy it. And I love the base as well. It shows the the crate surface of the the ready earth with the salt on top. Um, yeah, big fan of that. Big fan of that. If you see one, I recommend it. I don't know whether you can still get them, but um, this was the last one I saw in the shop. And this isn't a quickie at all. This is like seven minutes. Sorry. Um, but yeah, let me just show you just a little bit of graphic of um, of the quality of the. Of the sculpting and stuff. You know, for a toy, for a toy it looks really nice in a in a games room because it's on this little stand. I really like it. So um I've kept you there longer than I thought I was gonna do, sorry. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit the bell so that you get announcements and you get told when there's a new video going up, apparently. Who knows? Um hit like if you enjoyed it, leave a comment if you want it. Don't just say, oh, that girl's fat, because everyone knows. That's why I start every video with, I'm fat, and then something unique afterwards. Because, you know, you've got to make it nice for the kids. So, as ever, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, the bell, and stuff. And I will see you later. Bye!